resource-based economy by um, uh, the concept of uh, Jacques Fresco. Jacques Fresco was a mega genius who lived to 101 years old. He, uh, I believe, died last year, unfortunately. But he left us with a brilliant concept called the resource-based economy where we can share everything uh, similar to how we can share uh, oxygen, which is unmetered, available to everyone, abundantly, and undivided. You don't say, this is your oxygen, this is my oxygen, the same way we kind of do with our phones, cars, and so on. Um, so, essentially, if you actually look at um, <laughs> uh, 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 what's going on with, with crypto today, it's just it's completely crazy. Uh, uh, nobody really knows where to even start. But before I dig into uh, this brilliant concept of an AI-managed resource-based economy on the blockchain, I'm going to share with you a few uh, uh, quick examples uh, through stories of why this is important, how we can apply it, and how we can make our world a better place for us all. So, uh, uh, to begin, this is just a quick story about myself. When I was in, uh, in grade one, I was obsessed with pogs, and uh, that's when I started my first business. Now, you might say, how could you be in grade one and start a business? Uh, who gave me the education, right? You didn't get a, uh, a master's or anything. Uh, and, and it was only possible because we ourselves, like AI, are iterated through generations. I received a hybridized combination of both of my parents' minds, uh, which know accounting and uh, architectural design, entrepreneurship, and so on. And because I applied what they knew, during my first four years of childhood, I didn't have to actually learn it from scratch. I had the synaptic connections of their knowledge already in my brain, and I was able to take this fun toy and create custom-made slammers similar to these in grade one, and I was selling them for upwards of 400% profit markup. Now that was not my goal. I actually made them for myself because I really wanted to have my own Power Rangers and so on, uh, custom slammers, but when children at school saw them, they were very intrigued and they wanted their own, and that's how my business started. So I was essentially an accidental entrepreneur. Today, this same concept is essentially happening to AI. AI is being iterated. AI will have its own children, if you will, and they will be even more advanced than the AIs we know today that are serving Google and so on. And what we can learn from that essentially is what we knew and what we expect for our children based off of previous generations is not the same that will happen for future generations because they have those hybridized minds of the parents and they get to skip ahead to university level educations as early as four years old if they apply that knowledge. This is paramountly powerful and leads us further much more quickly. So it's imperative that we allow our children to thrive through entrepreneurship because it allows them to truly understand that there's, there's more to the world beyond money. There's more to the world beyond uh, uh, just uh, a survival, right? If we have um, uh, uh, education that is derived specifically to allow children to master these concepts early, let's say through gamification, then we get to skip forward uh, decades of education for them during those first four years of childhood, and that's why we're focused on that at one of my businesses, Autonomy City Games. In um, around 2003, I was playing this very chaotic looking game, and uh, this was actually when I was uh, 16 years old, my second true venture into entrepreneurship where I was buying and selling accounts and items in this game uh, as a teenager, and I was generating about 20,000 uh, US dollars a year uh, doing this just to, in my parents' basement. And I, I quickly realized that digital assets had true value. They were no longer this you know, uh, uh, useless uh, 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 digital pixel on the screen. It had real world value and I knew that we could take that and uh, uh, transform it into something that's even more powerful. So if you can have blockchain rewards and education, that way you have income and knowledge from the entertainment medium, you can leap further 
without having to uh, uh, constrain people to being uh, stuck to do specific jobs or having to go to specific schools to get those same things that they could get just playing a game online. So after I, I, I had these entrepreneurship ventures, I felt like, okay, so all I'm doing is just trying to make money. It's not really uh, um, fulfilling. It's just, it, it's nice to be able to go on vacation by yourself when you're a teenager, uh, but, but it's, it's not uh, the, the ultimate fulfillment that I was seeking. So I went on to uh, uh, research online, how can I actually make the world a better place? And I discovered several movements, like the Zeitgeist Movement, which today has about 150 million uh, members. And they're working essentially to promote the concept of job fresco, the resource-based economy. And they're, they're doing it in, in a way through uh, documentaries and uh, a movement. But I wanted to take it even further and, and apply the, the uh, uh, knowledge that we have today with blockchain and AI. So during my research, I realized even the most powerful entities uh, of the United States, like FBI, CIA, and NSA, because they're competing, instead of collaborating together, they ha were unable to even stop 9-11. And they did that because they want to have uh, the, the budget increase for them, say, hey, it was just the CIA who, who did all the heavy lifting, give us all the money. So that money drive is really polluting our ability to succeed at protecting ourselves and ensuring that we thrive. And this is a very uh, significant problem which we need to alleviate. So in, in my truth-seeking uh, journey, I discovered several uh, 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 people who were uh, focused on philosophy, and uh, international uh, solutions to monetary systems and uh, breaking down essentially the fact that we have completely created a fictitious monetary system uh, since 1971 when President Nixon took us off the gold standard um, which has essentially made us print money on one side called bonds money on the other side called notes, and when we exchange them, we magically increase the money supply. Now this is very unsustainable, and it's causing rampant inflation, because let's say I'm the bank, I print $10. I tell you, here you go, spend it, come back, bring me 11. I want the 11th for interest. But the 11th was never printed. So I print another $10, put it out into the world. Now there's 20. I want 22 back, but the last two were never printed. So I take 11 back, I leave you with nine. And you're out chasing your tails, trying to somehow turn that nine into the 11 that I need to get back for my interest. But it's a broken equation by design to ensure everybody becomes a dead slave. This is very dangerous and it's very irrational. So I discovered Bitcoin thanks to Max Kaiser during an interview he had with Stefan Molyneux. And I went on to see how can we take this concept of Bitcoin, which today, as we know, is $9,000, $10,000, got true value. People are willing to put their hard-earned, fancy toilet papers called money into it, that they earned with their blood, sweat, and tears, and get this digital coin, which is as good as the digital assets I had when I was 16 years old. How can we use it for a resource-based economy? And I figured, well, the ultimate solution would be to take that resource system, tokenize every resource, track it on the blockchain, and then have an artificial intelligence help us manage it symbiotically. This would ensure that we solve a very critical problem. We have destroyed and consumed over 33% of the planet in just the last 30 years. Over half the planet in the last 100 years. For what? Profit. What's profit? It's score. It's just score. It's not even backed by pure 24 karat gold anymore. It's just fancy toilet papers with numbers. And most of it is just digital now. So why are we destroying our spaceship Earth for scoreboards? It's an absurd notion. So if we can actually get John Fresco's concept of a resource-based economy executed on the blockchain, we can then have true abundance for everybody, share everything on the planet the same way we share oxygen, and ensure that nobody ever has to suffer or sell their children just to try and make ends meet. The fantastic part about this is, 
You might say, well, the most powerful people in the world, the wealthiest people in the world, the ones who have all the fancy toilet paper with ink on them, are not going to want this to happen. And that's only partly true, because if they truly understood how magnanimously powerful this concept is, they would actually be at the forefront leading it to happen, because it would improve their quality of life as well by ensuring that they have all the access they could ever imagine. So let's, let's try and imagine. If the Venus Project of John Fresco, which is out in Venus, Florida, and he made a small example to show us what it's like. If this actually were to take place, what would it look like in real life? Well, essentially, let's say you're rolling around in your favorite car, whether it's a Tesla or Lamborghini or whatever, and for some reason it breaks down. You were just driving it like a maniac. Well, the AI will immediately realize something is wrong with your vehicle and will ask you for permission to deploy drones to your location to fix your car by the side of the road and bring you refreshments while you wait. Now, this is only possible in a resource-based economy because we will never say how much does it cost. That's an insane idea to say how many fancy toilet papers on the scoreboard <coughs> must we use as an accounting layer on top of the resource economy which we use, none of us eat or drink money, to solve this problem. That's exactly how it should be. If you look up the storyofstuff.org, you'll discover they explain what I mentioned about how we've destroyed and consumed 33% uh, percent of the planet in the last 30 years, and you can learn more about how you can be uh, involved in this uh, uh, revolutionary concept to actually take into account the resources and the self-sustenance of the planet. This is, this is actually a clip from one of my cover uh, photos on Facebook. This is a, site, a list of sites actually um, that are all brilliant, like the thrivemovement.com, um, the freeworldcharter.org, um, Zeitgeist Movie, as I mentioned, the Zeitgeist Movement that Jock Press was mentioned in, storyofstop.org that I mentioned, Max Kaiser, and so on, TED.com, I'm sure many of you know that. And all of these websites have plenty of free information available uh, regarding these uh, uh, very critical subjects so that you can learn more on your own time. So you might say, why would I care? Why do I care? I have money, I'm happy, I don't care, I'm going to die, whatever, everything's good, I'm going to live a happy life. Anyway, why is this important? Well, your loved ones, your future generations, imagine if they're the only ones living on Spaceship Earth. Would you want them to make sure that that Spaceship Earth is sustainable, it's going to last? Or it's going to be depleted and then after three generations nothing will exist? This is a very, very important question that we need to ask ourselves. And it's very fundamental for us to not just live for survival, <coughs> but live to truly have abundant happiness. That's the true critical factor of the emotional experience that we have as humans. I'm very sorry, but we have to stop here on that positive note. Thank you so much.